But what would be the tipping point at which then you think that Powell puts his foot on the brake? You know, Andrew, I mean, the markets are, I mean, you think about what everybody, what drives business today, which drives the financial systems, everybody has a return target. That return target doesn't really change. You think about whether, what your liability stream is, you think about what your IRR target is. And so I've got to hit a return target. So you think, okay, how am I going to get there? What are the tools that I have to get there? You know, you think about what happened years ago, financial crisis, otherwise, when you keep rates low for too long, it will create leverage building up in the system. It'll create stress in terms of over purchasing of assets at the wrong price. Listen, I think the equity market is where a lot of the income is today. I mean, the fixed income market, which is a lot of my day, um, you know, there are parts of the high yield market are interesting, parts of emerging markets, parts of the securitized market. But the equity market is where all the income is today. We look at some of the dividends being paid out to free cash flow yield generation, but then it's going to get overdone. But 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 I'm, just to, to put a fine point on in terms of the valuations, you think even tech valuations today are, are very much within the realm of reality, meaning you don't think that they are, are being artificially inflated. But it sounds like you don't think they're being artificially inflated yet. That's correct. So, Andrew, I, I mean, I, listen, I think what happened in August into the beginning of September, some of the valuations and some of the big tech names, I think, got extreme. The call option activity was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. And that was pushing some valuations of six or seven companies to levels that I think were too high. I think that was a very healthy recalibration. But gosh, I, you know, I look at a lot of business. I actually think what's the most fun today is a lot of these new businesses, these new companies are coming to market, cloud, AI, data assimilation. These are really exciting businesses. You just talked about one of them. You know, their ability to get scale quickly. I mean, you talked earlier about DraftKings. You think about how you can create scale globally. Um, it's, it's different than anything we've ever seen before. And I think you'll see commerce change pretty quickly and what we're witnessing we're, that, that will play out today. How do you feel about the unloved cyclicals that I think there's, there's still a wait and see attitude given the pandemic about whether they're going to come back and when? Ostensibly, you want to get in before that moment happens that I imagine is a bit of a binary event around the vaccine. Maybe it's not binary, though, because it could take quite some time. We've heard now from officials that on a vaccine level uh, basis for, uh, for the whole world, it might actually take several years to actually vaccinate the, yeah. the world. So, Andrew, we've done a bunch of that. I mean, per, per the discussion about, about big tech being too high, we've rotated an awful lot into the cyclicals. I do think the economy is in good shape. I continue to think, you know, who knows, we're going to get retail sales. You know, you could get a monthly aberration, but the consumer's in good shape. The economy's in better shape. We've talked about it on your show for, for months now. The economy's in better shape than people give credit to. I'm not a big believer to buy what is quote unquote value. That is companies that are old businesses where commerce is changing the way they <laughs> changing their the efficacy of their business model. But I do think cyclicals, whether it's in trucking or rail or chemicals, I do think there's some interesting cyclicals to play in that in today's environment. I but we've done some of that rotation. I still think it's there to do.